Photoshop has a few features that you can find in the options bar at the top right of the interface. Let's explore each of these tools. Click on the magnifying glass and that will launch the Discover panel, providing you with many options for helping you use the program. The first option is the search window. Type in a keyword to learn more about the tools, functions, and techniques used in Photoshop. Let's type in the word clone to see what comes up. You could click on see all results or go down to the shortcuts. First, let's look at all the results. The Discover panel is now displaying tools and features of the tool that you search for, a listing of instructions on how to use the tool in the help section, and a listing of videos with hands-on tutorials on how to use the tool. Hover your cursor over the clone stamp tool and you will see a blue pointer box indicating where in the toolbar the clone stamp tool is located. Click on the home icon to return the discover panel to its original state or you can use the back button that will do the same. The next section are suggestions with tips and advice. Below that you could browse through hands-on tutorials, quick actions, and learn about the new features in Photoshop. Then you are provided with resource links to a user guide, support community, plugins, Adobe Stock Photo Collection, Adobe Fonts, and Adobe Live. Let's check out the Quick Actions option. These actions are very similar to Photoshop's Neural Filters. With one click, you can make significant changes to your photograph. You can remove the background, blur the background, make the background black and white, or enhance the image. Let's click Blur the Background on this image of street performers wearing red costumes and makeup. Look at the History panel and you'll see all of the actions Photoshop created automatically. Notice how Photoshop isolated the subjects, placed a selection around them, and then inversed the selection to highlight the background. Now look at the Layers panel and you'll see all the layers Photoshop created automatically. You can actually learn processes by studying what Photoshop did to create this effect. Take some time to explore the panel on your own to discover how much depth there is with all the help it provides. The Workspace Presets button found in Photoshop will arrange your panels and tools based on the category selected. When you click the icon, the menu will open and reveal a list of several presets. When a preset is selected, the panels and tools will change to give you the most relevant tools for that specific workflow. For this course, you will be using the Essentials workspace the most. It will give you a variety of panels to get started. You can open other panels even though you are in a specific workspace. After some time using Photoshop, the canvas can become cluttered with panels getting in the way. Maybe some of the panels don't even need to be open anymore. Go back to the Workspace menu and select Reset Essentials. This will put everything back to the way it was before and close any panels not part of the Essentials Workspace preset. You can also create your own preset if the default presets do not meet your needs. Just open the panels that you find yourself using all the time. Then open up the Workspace preset menu Scroll to the bottom and select New Workspace. Give your new workspace a name and select any of the options provided. Click Save and when you go back to the menu, you will see your workspace in the list. If you would like to remove it from the list, make sure it is not your active workspace. Select a different workspace, return to the menu, navigate to the bottom, and select Delete Workspace. The Delete Workspace menu will appear. Select your workspace and click Delete. Workspace Presets will help you by giving you the tools and panels most related to a workflow or process and also will allow you to create your own custom preset. The last icon is to share an image. This lets you share your image quickly with clients or social media services. You can use this feature to send your work. If you choose to send by email, it will actually send a PSD file. This feature isn't necessary to use in this course, but it's good to know about future projects.